the Storm Tracker Podcast. Welcome back to the Storm Tracker Podcast. My name is Marcus Benjamin, publisher of CanesCounty.com. And I'm here today joined by Steve O, representing 365 Canes Football. He contributes to the site, of course, with his film reviews. He's he's a guy who also is a coach for one of the best seven on seven teams in the country at Raw Miami. Thanks for joining me today, Steve O. No, pleasure for having me. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure on mine. And uh I can't wait to get it started. It's uh exciting times to be a Canes fan. It's exciting time, for, you know, for football, even though spring just ended. So it's not any more football going on, but everybody knows how this transfer portal is taking over things. Absolutely, man. Well, we'll dive right into that in a minute, in, in a minute, but I do also kind of want to just say just to subscribe to canescounty.com for free. You see it scrolling down at the bottom. Use the promo code Miami 30. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel live from Canes County. Yeah, it's been transfer portal Palooza going on here down in Miami, man. And Crystal Ball and the staff has been at it again. They went four for four, like, like the Wendy's value meal uh, last weekend. And they're trying to add some more pieces as well. But let's talk about the guys that they did add, man. They they added an explosive running back in Damian Martinez. They, they added uh, a Deani Hill, uh, a corner from, from Marshall, who obviously Chevis Jackson and Lance Kidry were familiar with in his recruiting process. And they also added Jalen Alderman uh, at linebacker and Sam Brown at receiver. So an unbelievable haul a couple of weekends ago. But who are you most excited about, about these four guys coming to Miami? Uh, I'm biased because, uh, you know, I do coach one position. And uh, so I'm going to go with the receiver and Sam Brown. Uh, and it's a trend with all the guys that we mentioned that we brought in this weekend. There's a familiarity with the staff. In 2022, Samuel Brown played under Coach Dawson at Houston. Uh, so verbiage coming in, he should hit the ground running. He should be able to grasp the playbook quickly and come in and compete and, you know, make a stamp for your starting job, you know, versus Horton. Uh, so I'm very excited to see that battle. Uh, we were just talking about that off air. So I would have to go with Sam Brown. Uh, and I love the trend of familiarity you touched on it with Hill and, you know, Chavis Jackson, our new cornerbacks coach and our safety slash, you know, defensive coordinator, Lance Guidry. Uh, so they love the familiarity there. And then you touched on, you know, our new linebacker addition, coach D Nick, of course, he was just at Louisville. He recruited all of them in there. So now he recruited him here to Miami. So, again, familiarity, verbiage, things are going great. Uh, it's not just names you hear and, oh, we got this guy from this guy. We got to, you know, start reading into it, look a little back, look a little deeper into it, and see that some of these guys are going to be instant plug-in players that, at least language-wise, there should be no hurdles. Yeah, absolutely. You got to love the fact that they kind of went back to the well, you know, as far as guys that they – new and and we're familiar with so these are plug and play guys that can just make make an impact immediately i think for this team i mean, I mean for me um uh, i'm kind of a running back guy man so just to have to add damian martinez to this running back room is really i think just tremendous uh to couple him with a mark fletcher and an aj allen and you know the young guys as well chris and chris um, I, I think it's really going to be an exciting running back room, especially with Cam Ward, who's who we know also has, you know, dual threat ability. So to have a quarterback and a running back in the backfield that is explosive is something that we haven't seen at Miami for a little while, you know, probably since Malik Rozier, uh, really, uh, where, where you had kind of a, a nice combination like that. Um, you had other quarterbacks here and there. Uh, but to this level, to th what this level could be, I'm really excited for for Damian Martinez as well as uh, uh, Sam Brown uh, as well. So, um, but the thing about the transfer portal, Steve O, is that you, you win some and you lose some, but you live. <laughs> you live. You live to fight another day. You know, so you do lose some players here. Um, out of the transfer portal, a ton, uh, I would say a ton of players, yeah, kind of left the program. The, um, Savion Riley, Jared Harrison Hunt, and Nigel Lee Kelly, Henry Parrish. I mean, Jaden Wayne, Jaden Wayne. I mean, uh, 
Jonathan Dennis, uh, Sagan Sagan. Pop, um, who else am I missing here? Is um, Marcellius Pulliam, um, jumped in the portal as well. I mean, just a ton of guys, man. So, and, and not to mention probably one of the, the one that kind of created probably the most headlines down here, which was Jakari Brown. Yeah. Out of all these players that did leave, though, Steve-O, which player do you think – or which player is most disappointing to you to see leave the University of Miami? Uh, to me, as a fan, we get emotionally connected because we're all new to this transfer portal era of college football. It's all new, so we're used to having guys for three years before they could leave or something like that. Uh, so we were – you know, 2019, heads on, you know – Jaden Wayne coming from Washington and everybody was arguing back and forth. Oh, is he actually even interested? And they'd be like, Oh, he came here on his own dime one time. Then now it's two times. Now it's three times. He's definitely interested. Then it, it came into like, yo, actually we could probably really sign him. Then Mario came in. And it's like, Oh my God, he's like actually going to come. So to see him leave, uh, especially when he played in games like Virginia last year, where he actually had really good reps. I thought he should have got more, uh, but it it just hurts to see him leave without seeing you know him reach his potential here. Him going back home to Washington that that was probably the most disappointing thing for me. I I get it, you know Miami still you know shopping for more defensive ends and uh, we already have a pretty good defensive line already. So I get it, but man that that sucks not to see a, a guy like that who was you know a five star talented guy, uh, you know not develop here. Yeah, absolutely. For me, um, there's a couple of guys disappointing to leave as far as. Um, you know, departures are concerned. Savion Riley for me, it's like, man, this this guy had a chance to, you know, to really get in, get on the field and get some playing time. So I'm fortunate to see that that player from that position group, I guess, more so um, leave the program because they're it's not like they're really deep at safety. Uh, so if if one of the top guys goes down, then you know, I'm a little worried about that position group. So if, if he was there, then I think he would be a good depth piece and a good guy to develop over the years. And the other one for me is uh, Jared Harrison Hunt, man. Uh, Harrison Hunt was just a guy that I think w- w- was going to play a lot. Um, you know, Lance Gidry praised him uh, last year about being lucky to have a guy like him on the team. And didn't get to see him really play with an Akeem, Akeem Mesador. Um, so if you had had an Akeem Mesador and and Bain and you know the the, the couple of transfers that brought in Cook and and Clark as well as um, Elijah Alston, uh, that's a pretty formidable uh, defensive line that could have been. So yeah, just kind of disappointed to see uh, Jared Harrison Hunt probably the most. Um, there's actually a bunch that, that I would say though, it's kind of hard to, like you said, it's hard to really kind of say which, you know, hurts the most, but, um, that, that definitely was probably, I I guess, maybe the more confusing thing. Um, but you know, that, that's what the transfer portal is all about. And I did want to kind of talk about the transfer portal just as a whole, man. A lot of people say it's good for football college football some people say it's bad for college football or whatnot i think it's a it's a great opportunity to keep for kids to find a place that works for them but you you know as well as i do steve-o that a lot of the times these kids don't find a home you know they're just kind of they get lost in the matrix that's called the transfer portal you know and that part of it is disappointing because a lot of these kids would benefit from staying with the program that they're that they're at to continue to develop. Uh, you never know what can happen as far as attrition is concerned. But what's what's your opinion about the transfer portal in itself, and do you feel like it's good for college football? Um, I love the ability for kids to up and leave for a better situation or even more fair situation, maybe a fresh start, whatever the case is, I'm all for it. And I think it's needed because coaches can up and leave. It's kind of like the, one of the main things, which is true. You could be in somebody's living room in December and then, you know, come January, you know, after you're freaking running to the playoffs, you know, I'm, I'm out of here. Sorry. You know? Yeah. Uh, so that's just the reality of the situation. So definitely in favor of it. 
but uh, it's just the rules. There is no rules. So at least before there was a one-time transfer thing. Now guys are hitting three, four, five schools. Like most universities don't give out a degree unless you took like 50 or 60% of the courses there. Like you're not getting a degree. And then you, so like it's definitely pay, full pay for play. Now these guys are, you know, completing these things. So, and also it trickles down to the high school effect because uh, a lot of these you know, G5 teams like a USF or JMU or just a lot of these teams used to get three stars down here and used to come down here and, you know, and offer a lot of three stars and get up a lot of that talent that was the major power five conferences weren't taken. Now, instead of going there into those, getting those kids there, they're waiting on that four star, five star from two years ago. Uh, to drop down from the SEC, and you know that that's that it's affecting high school kid recruitings. Like right now, uh, my little brother's three star St. Thomas, and I see so much kids just going through the waiting game. You know because all these guys are waiting on the portal. Like, thank God it's a dead period during like December. You would never see a coach or talk to a coach if you're like, <laughs> like you know they're they're so busy with the portal. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, another player that Miami is looking into uh, from the portal who kind of has gone through this type of, uh, you know, like roller coaster kind of portal journey, you could say, is Tyler Barron. And this guy, he decided to enter the portal from Tennessee and then uh, committed to Ole Miss and then jumped into the portal again. Uh, committed to uh, Louisville, spent the spring there, and now is back in the portal again. So it's an interesting journey for for him, but Miami's still doing its best to try to bring him to South Florida. This is a guy who took an official visit to Miami um, that same weekend that you know the four aforementioned players decided to commit to Miami. He was there during that weekend. He was the one who literally got away without a commitment. But what can he do for the depth of the defensive line if he indeed chooses the Hurricanes in the end? I mean, you're talking about a multi-year starter in the SEC. He has production over six sacks last year, 10 and a half tackles for a loss, brings physicality and stability to the room. Means we can move Mesidor inside. We can move Ruben Bain inside, you know, on third down, even more if we want to get into the passer, because you just have that option. They have that availability. You know, you can move them all around now because, you know, you have a Baron on the outside who's been dependable and he's already showed you on tape, hey, I'm going to be an impact player. That's just it is what it is. I'm going to be physical against the run. I'm going to be in the backfield every play. I'm going to get some sacks, high effort, and I'm going to chase down good technique. He has a couple of spikes. Uh, so he's fighting for a high motor player, so a guy who could play a ton of snaps, even though we have depth. But you can you can make things work by mixing people around. Like you have the the defensive line is is going to be nice. You have Barrow, who has a great pass rushing rate that just came in from Michigan State. Uh, you know, Ruben Bain can move inside. Mesidor can move inside. Austin is a beast on the outside. We'll see how it translates to the Power Five level. But if he's what he is, he's going to be at least you know above average starter. Yeah, just wanted to play some highlights of of Baron because you kind of see the ability that he has. I mean, he really um, he, he's one of those relentless type of workers, and he he to me he really um, is very similar to like kind of how Jason Taylor played, where, where he was just relentless. He kept kept you know after it as far as as far as the plays are, are concerned. So I think he can be a really nice addition, especially when you lose a Jaden Wayne and a Nigel Lee Kelly. It's, it's um, I, I think it's really kind of paramount at this point that they add another player uh, for the edge because, you know, injuries happen. Uh, I, defensive line is, is, you could say, probably the most rotated uh, position group, like as far as players that rotate rotate in and out of a game, it can be eight to nine different players in, in one game. So you kind of want 
you know, that heavy rotation of guys and being fresh, especially on third down to rush the passer. And Tyler Barron can definitely be that guy. My guess is that Miami will make this happen um, and, 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 and add Barron to the roster. We'll say you, you, th- you think uh, Miami has a, a good chance to, uh, to, to land Barron? This week. Yeah, I would I would say I I think Miami's in the driver's seat at this point, and uh, we'll just see if they close because you know that's the thing with the portal, you're in the driver's seat until it actually happens, and uh, you know even then you can get a commitment from a portal and they'll flip, so you never really know. Uh, but classes are are coming up, so uh, if he wants to be a hurricane, he's gonna have to get the ball rolling. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next upcoming days. More updates on canescounty.com on that in the next uh, upcoming days. Um, make sure, again, to subscribe to the website. Use the promo code Miami30. Uh, a couple more questions for you, Steve-O. I actually wanted to know your opinion on second-year players, man. Um, we want to see some some players really kind of step up, take it to the next level here in year it's already year three or already year three of crystal ball it feels like man the time is just kind of going by fast here but we're, yeah we're going into year three here of the crystal ball era so as far as second year players though um because i, I would say that is really crystal ball's real first class what guys do you want to see step up here in the 2024 season yeah, I have two in mind. They're both at the same position, uh, but I'm gonna go with Damari Brown, uh, first uh, four star out of here at Broward County, out of the American Heritage. He's a baller. And he has the size. Uh, he played over his older brother last year, and just tells you what type of dog he is. Uh, he's just super athletic, great size for the pound. He's gonna live on the outside, long arms, big, physical, fast corner. He can run with people. Uh, he has to just step up and be that guy. On the outside, it's as simple as that. We need you to start 14, 15 games if we go on a run and be Demar Brown for 15 games, and we'll be fine. I think uh, that's a huge one. Uh, if Kings want to run this table, it's going to be more than just Cam Ward. You know, you're going to have to play defense, so you have to. You can't always be on Cam Ward. Can't always be on Cam Ward. Can't always be on Cam Ward. So you know, you got to play defense. We got big games on the schedule. We already know who's coming down this year, uh, so. You know, got to make got to make plays in those games. And uh, to tell that, I'll, I'll probably add Robert Stafford again, cornerback room, another room that you know questionable. Uh, people t- question the depth there. We just brought in Hill. You know, we talked about earlier from Marshall, um, but I think Robert Stafford. You know, we lost to Corey Couch. Fans would always love talking about to Corey Couch. He gave a solid nickel play for like three, four years, bro. Like you yeah. understand? Like when the PFF grades come out, they're always like, oh, my God, this. And, like, you know, he has two run reads and then coverage. So, like, yeah, he's a step behind. Like, but he's <laughs> – oh, man, it was, it's really good nickel play for the last couple of years. We've been spoiled. So, to be real, to Darius Richard, to Mari Brown, bigger guys, they can play the nickel, but they don't have that quicker twitch, you know, of, like, the nickels of, you know, more modern days. So, yeah, you can have them have success in the slot with, you know, versus tight ends. But only the, you know, outside of Daryl Porter Jr., who's our top corner, Robert Stafford is the guy with the juice in the room. So if anybody could step up at nickel and then let me step back at safety more so that can help alleviate some problems in another room, I think, you know, Damari Brown and Robert Stafford stepping up. If that were to happen, that would make the defense, you know, that would turn a page over for the defense. If they could let, you know, me be back at safety because those two guys stepped up as second year players, I think we'll be very happy. Let's talk a little bit more about that. I know we talked a little bit off air about this DB room, man. Um, I was thinking that Jadias Richard likely would be the nickel corner. Um, Michelle Powell has been playing at that nickel. Uh, and then you got Jaden Harris at, at safety. I already talked about Savion Riley uh, leaving the program. And then you got Marquise Williams as well at safety and Damari. Who do you think really makes this final five <laughs> as far as DBs is a concern? I mean, we all, we all know Daryl Porter's in there. We could just pencil him in. So who makes the other four? For you well michelle powell too we yeah. could already pencil him in as well <laughs> uh so who makes the other three steve-o 
Yeah, so in this mock, I'll, I'll leave uh, Mish back deep at safety, so Powell at safety. So I'll go, you know, Daryl Porter, obviously, then Powell. Uh, I do think Jaden Harris starts. As of right now, nobody else is coming in. Uh, you know, no one's going to start over Jaden Harris. I think he's been the heir apparent. This is Mario's third year. We talked about that now. Like, you know, Harris is not a Manny guy. He came in in Mario's class. He's been in the program for three years. He looks good. You see him physically, he looks good. This looks like, you know, you're very happy with some of these third-year players that have stuck, like Horton. You see the bodies changed over the last two years. And, you know, they look like dudes now. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, Jaden Harris will step up in that role. He was Cam's understudy. You know, Cam uh, coaches with Raw as well. Jaden Harris has been to a few of our tournaments. So always rooting for him. Great kid. Great young man. Uh, so I'm going to go with him to start at safety. And then uh, I'm going to go Damari outside. I just have to see it. Uh, just need to see that six on the outside. Playing man all day. Bump and run. You know, let Gidry drop whatever, you know, blitz packages he wants to do. Let him do anything he wants to do. He wants. But we're playing man on that side. And uh, that's that's what we need. Um, then Nickel. It is because, uh, um, you know, Jadias does have versatility. Can play Nickel. He can play safety. Um, but – I don't know, man. I, it's it's wishful thinking, but I, I just really want Robert Stafford to take that job. He was he was hurt and banged up oh, a little Richard. bit. Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. I really I really want Stafford to take that job, bro. I really do. I think as you go into fall camp, Richard will probably be starting there, or it'll be vice versa with De- Demari in the nickel getting the reps there and Jadais outside. However, they handle that competition because those two are definitely going to compete in the outside opposite of Daryl, and then a loser of that's going to nickel. I just don't think Demar is gonna lose it, um, but I don't know, man. It would it would just it would behoove the team if uh, you know if Stafford could win that nickel job, and then you could have more versatility with Jadis at safety. Gotcha. Um, so Hill, who, the transfer uh, that we talked about, he's more you think maybe like just a depth piece. Do, do you think this guy could could crack the starting lineup at any point in the season? Yeah, I think the thing with Hill is he's great in man coverage, and that's what a lot of people are talking about. But bro, he is he's like he's like a top five tackler in the country. Like when it comes to missed tackles, it was it's his tackling grade is stupendous. So he's a guy who could you can count on on the outside on the boundary to tackle, and that is huge. A lot of these big runs that you see in college football, most of them start with the cornerback missing a tackle. And then that's how they get off to the races. So if you don't want that happening, you having a corner who could play physical and tackle is definitely somebody who I think is going to be in the two deep immediately just because of that attribute, just because you could depend on him. Now in man coverage, it is in the G5 level, but he is really sticky. He's very feisty. Might get a little tugs here and there. Only had like three, like you know, penalties, but some of them were soft. He, he's a dog. He has that, you know, that verse, you know, that that fight. He's also could probably play a little nickel. I'm not going to lie. He's in the 5'11", but, you know, most of his tape I'm out, is outside. And if I'm him, I'm coming in like, yo, if somebody got to put me to the nickel. I'm going to compete first. Right. Uh, so I definitely think he's going to contribute in the 2D, uh, especially since, bro, it, it's hard for these corners, bro. You, if we play a lot of man coverage. They don't get to sit back and zone a lot. These guys are running, 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 running. And the offense is just switching receivers out, switching receivers out, getting fresh legs on them. It got to have a good 2D back corner. So even regardless of injuries, I would expect to see, you know, Hill's name, you know, pop up throughout camp as somebody who's, you know, flashing. And then throughout the season, we'll see, you know, because Damari and Jadai, we're high on them. But if they do not perform, I don't think there's going to be any hesitancy to see if Hill can. Good stuff. Now let's switch over to the uh, offensive side of the ball and really talk about second uh, year players that, or it doesn't have to really be a second year player, just a a player that you want to see more utilized in this offense in 2024. Who's that for you? Uh, It's it's gotta be Isaiah Horton, man. I I just feel like he has to, even Sam Brown coming in is six, two, you know, Horton's a true six, four receiver. He's third year in the program and bro, he's working. He is working. He's been working since he's gotten here. I love seeing him at the park. Uh, you know, with these trainers balling. 
Uh, every time he gets the chance in the game last year, he answered the call. I respect that. I love that. A guy just needs more opportunities. When that Texas a and catch came, everybody was like, oh, my God, he's going to you know, he's gonna come on. And then they kind of weren't throwing them the ball for a couple of games. And then, boom, all of a sudden, hey, we're going to depend on him. And he's just coming through, coming through. Oh, then, hey, we're going to keep getting the ball to X and Jacoby. And not much balls are going back to Horton. And then, boom, hey, it's the bowl game. We need you. Start. Okay, back shoulder. This, this, this. Every single time he got an opportunity, he made the most of that. And I respect that. He came, committed. He's been working. He's a third year guy. He's shown the flashes anytime he's got an opportunity. With so, and he's the only guy in our room with that skill. So even with Joe, even though Brown is able to head top people, he's not six four. It's just a difference. It, it really right. is just a difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, can't wait to see what what Zay Horton does. I think he's in for a huge year. Uh, here in 2024. Um, another guy that, that we talked about as well was uh, Elijah Arroyo. Uh, Elijah Arroyo, from what I've seen this spring, looks like he's ready to, you know, really dominate at his position. So uh, this is a guy who can, you know, be a mismatch in, in coverage and he blocks really well as well. Um, and I, I think, he's just going to have some opportunity to, to make plays, especially with this offense, with a better quarterback in, in the second year of Shannon Dawson's offense. And, you know, he's hungry to really make plays after really kind of dealing with an injury after two straight years. What do you think uh, about the utilization of Arroyo in 2024? Do you think we'll, we'll see a lot of him? I feel like if we don't, that means the tight ends are kind of not being used a lot. If you just see him in there blocking because he is an excellent blocker, then, you know, that I would be disappointed. So I would hope, you know, that the usage and the emergence of Arroyo as, you know, a true pass catching, you know, vertical threat that we haven't had since well, – it was only like a year or two off, but since Mallory left at least, uh, we, de- we need a big frame going up the middle. Uh, I mean, I thought TVD missed it as well. I mean, every quarterback, Cam Ward included, needs a big threat going up the middle. I mean, that's just what it is. A guy who's 6'4", 6'5", you don't have to put an accurate ball. They just go up there and get it. You know, shield, you know, safety's 5'10". Of course, you're going to throw it up. Just put it up where he can't get it. Um, You know, over a linebacker, especially in the red zone. You know, so every quarterback's going to benefit from a big tight end. And look at the NFL. It's just turning that way uh, offensively. So we would hope that Elijah Arroyo – completely healthy i've seen him he's breaking down great still wears the brace but i mean he looks good that doesn't look like there's anything hindering him he's just he's just doing his thing uh so i do think uh you know elijah Royo could be that guy i would think a successful season in my mind would be him being around 400 to 500 yards at the end of the year i think that would be successful for the tight end obviously yeah. the receiving core is going to go stupid uh you know they they're going to get your thousand yard guys like x maybe jacoby um, you know, if Cam Ward really goes just ballistic, <laughs> you know, you could have 2,000 yeah. yard receivers and, you know, Sam Brown and Horton being, you know, 500 plus guys. So, uh, you know, I could see Hort, uh, Elijah Arroyo having like a 500 plus type year and that would be a big success. Yeah, I don't see any reason why Ward wouldn't go stupid uh, in, in this offense. I mean, threw for almost 4,000 yards last year behind a subpar offensive line. I mean, this this offensive line is going to be miles ahead better than what he played uh, with uh, at uh, Washington State. And he is, it's a money year for, it's it's like a contract year (laughs) in football for him. Uh, So he's really wanting to prove that, hey, uh, I I, I should be picked first round. So I think he's, Definitely going to have a big year, and if he does, then, of course, the Hurricanes do, and, of course, you know, Arroyo and others and Zay Horton will as well. That's Steve-O representing for 365 Canes football and Raw Miami. Uh, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And, of course, we're looking forward to another film review from you as well. Thank you, man. Anytime. I appreciate you guys having me on. Go Canes. Awesome. That's going to wrap it up for the Storm Tracker podcast. Once again, make sure you subscribe to canescounty.com for free. Use the promo code Miami30. Follow this podcast on all platforms and also subscribe to the YouTube channel live from Canes County. Until the next episode.